Okay. With the quadratic formula, there are four things that can happen. They all involve what we call the discriminant, which is the b squared minus 4ac part, which appears underneath the square root sign in our formula. Let's look at these three things that can happen, four things that can happen. In the first one, there's no number in front of there, so I read it as 1. a is 1, b is plus 6, and c is plus 9. So if I throw it into my formula, I get the variable n is equal to the opposite of b, which is minus 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 6 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9, all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. What we then get for n is opposite of 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 36, all over 2. So the first thing that could happen is your b squared minus 4ac part of your formula may end up being 0. So n is the opposite of 6 plus 0 over 2, or the opposite of 6 minus 0 over 2. Well, this just gives us one answer. n is n is negative 3. Okay, so we end up with just one answer in that type of a situation. Later on when you see graphing, you'll start to understand why you may end up with just one answer. Okay, so both of these guys give you the same answer. The second thing that could happen, a is 2, b is 5, c is 12. Notice before I even start the quadratic formula, I made sure one side is equal to 0. Okay. The opposite of b is negative 5 plus or minus b squared, which is 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 12, all over 2 times a, and a is 2. So this gives me the opposite of 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 48. Okay. Minus, sorry, minus 96. All over 4. And let's just draw a line here. Okay. Now what happens in this situation is when you go to take your square root, you find out that it's the square root of a negative number. Okay, uh, 25 minus 96 is minus 71. And because you're taking the square root of a negative number, there is no answer. Okay, so if you, when you do the b squared minus 4ac part of your question, you get a negative number, then there's no answer. Okay, the third thing that can happen with the quadratic formula, again, there's no number here, so I'll call it 1. a is 1, b this time is negative 6, and c is positive 8. Now when I throw these into the quadratic formula, I get w equals the opposite of b. Now since b is negative 6, the opposite, I change to positive 6. That's why I always read it as the opposite. b squared, so that's negative 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 8 all divided by 2 times a, which is 1.
when I work this out on top, I get negative to the sets times negative to the sets is 30 sets. 4 times 1 times 8 is 32. And I get a perfect square. So I get W equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. Well, that works out absolutely nicely. It'll be 6 plus 2 over 2, or 6 minus 2 over 2. So I get two nice little answers. 8 over 2, which is 4, or 4 over 2, which is 2. So the third thing that could happen is that inside the square root sign, I may end up with a positive number, in which case I'll get two answers, and that positive number may end up being a perfect square root. And if it's a perfect square root, then I make sure that I find out what that square root is, and I simplify it as far as possible. One thing that tells you, whenever it works out to a perfect square root, it tells you that your original question could have been factored. Okay, so we could have solved it a bit quicker if we had factored that. Okay, let's look at this fourth thing that could happen. A is 3, B is 4, C is negative 11. So the variable then is equal to the opposite of B, which is negative 4, plus or minus B squared, that's 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 11, all over 2 times a, which is 3. Okay, underneath the square root sign, the b squared minus 4ac part, this works out to subtracting a negative, so I write down positive right away. As soon as I see two negatives there, I write down positive. 4 times 3 is 12, times 11 is 132, all divided by 6. Again, if the uh, equation works out underneath the square root sign to be a positive number, I am going to get two answers. One by adding the square root, and the other by subtracting the square root. Now, in this time, it works out to the square root of 148. Okay? And um, so P is equal to two answers. Negative 4 plus the square root of 148 over 6. Or negative 4 minus the square root of 148 over 6. Now these two answers end up being irrational numbers. They end up being um, something that uh, is, uh, works out to an odd number of decimal places, but we do get two different answers. The original question could not be factored because 148 is not a perfect square. Okay, recapping. Here are the four things that can happen. And they all involve this thing called the discriminant. What happens to b squared minus 4ac? With the first question, we found that the square root sign was 0, and we only got one answer. Second question, we found the square root sign had a negative number under it, so we got no answers. The third and fourth questions, underneath the square root sign, we had a positive number, so we got two answers. If it's a perfect square root, we got two nice whole number, and we'll get whole number or rational answers. If it's a non-perfect square root, like 148, we would end up getting two answers, but they would be irrational numbers. And you could take your calculator and work out what they are. Okay? Okay, now I'm just going to show you on this one a couple of things you can do with this last answer here. Sometimes they would like you to leave it as a square root 
uh, in its square root form, radical form they may call it, but they like it in simplest radical form. So what I'm going to do is take the square root of 148 and break it up into 4 times 37. Okay, that ends up being 148. And the square root of 4 is 2. Okay. So we get two answers here. 2 root 37 all over 6. Now please remember that divide sign. The 6 has to go into both terms. Well, in this case, 6 does not go into the top term, either one of them. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to factor out a 2. Because 2 goes into negative 4 and leaves negative 2. And 2 goes into there and just leaves root 37. On the bottom, I'm going to factor out a 2, and that would be a 2 times a 3. The 2's cancel. So in simplest radical form, I would now have negative 2 plus root 37 all over 3. Or negative 2 minus root 37 all over 3. Okay, so there would be my two answers in what we call simplest radical form. Okay, now since the square root of 37 is equal to uh, 6.083 I could carry on if the question asked me to. If the question asked me to take it to decimal places, then I would get these as my two answers. I would get 4.083 over 3, or minus 8.083 over 3 and 4.083 divided by 3 is 1.361 and negative 8.083 divided by 3 is 2.694 except that it would be negative 2.694 so that would be my answers if they asked me to take it to three decimal places. Okay.